Hi, I'm Takeshi. I'm an under engineer in the developer relations team based in Tokyo. Today, we are talking about building modern Android app widgets. In this talk, we will talk about what are app widgets and how they are different from normal apps at the beginning. In the next part, we will talk about improvements in Android 12. At the last part, we will talk about better tooling for app widgets that has more modern approach. Let's look at what are app widgets and how they are different from normal apps. Let's imagine them as at a glance views of an app that offers quick glanceable functionalities without launching an app. The key aspect of widget is that widget runs in a remote process called app widget host. One example is home screen launcher. Because an app widget runs in a remote process, certain limitations are applied. Let's look at how app widgets work. At the first, your app register the app widget provider that defines the behavior, and the app widget provider info that defines the metadata. Then the Android manifest points to them. This allows the OS to display widget preview and the several metadata such as the initial layout and the default size of the widget. Then the provider you linked can redefine the layout and update the widget. It's important to note that only limited number of views can be used for app widgets. Then the OS provides updates through broadcast events into the receiver, meaning that the widget is updated periodically by the broadcast events. I explained each step how an app widget works. Finally, let's look at the entire picture that illustrates how each piece fits together. Android widgets have been core to Android since 2008, and they are key for many users to drive a user's engagement. Also, the APIs for app widgets are there since basically the beginning of Android, but they haven't changed much until now. As you can see in the graph, app widgets are there from the early days of Android. Few improvements were made along the different Android versions. And of course, better widget designs organically happened. But those were minor changes and there hasn't been frequent updates. For example, from 2012 to 2021, there was only one Android version that included updates on app widgets. But Android 12 finally brings much needed improvements. Let's look at the improvements in Android 12. I'll cover important changes because we brought significant updates, and though I cannot cover them all in the talk. In Android 12, many of the key UI elements now have rounded the corners. To make app widgets look consistent across other widgets and the system appearances, new parameters are introduced. The first one represents the corner radius of the widget background. To use the parameter for app widgets, Let's define a drawable that has corners where the system parameter is applied. Similarly, the second one represents the corner radius of any view inside the widget. Let's define another drawable for the background of the inner views. Then, apply that drawable to the outer container of the widget. By doing that, you can apply the corner radius provided by the system parameter to the background of the widget. Similarly, apply the drawable for the inner views to the layout that represents the inner container of the widget. As you can see in the example, now the inner container has the smaller radius than the outer container. Dynamic colors. As we announced at Google I.O., we introduced personalized theming and color experiences. In Android 12, we added a dynamic color API to allow widgets to be consistent with the system resources and the home screen. You can use dynamic color API by using the theme provided by the system on Pixel devices. And the color attributes such as color background and the color accent. As you can see in the example, the background of the widget and the color of the image view adapt to the device theme. For pixel devices, colors extracted from the wallpaper can be used to allow the widget to look uniform in the home screen. 
As you can see in the examples, the dominant color from the wallpaper is extracted and applied to the image views in both light and the dark scenes. Let's look at the widget that has an old appearance for comparison. Before applying the changes, the widget layout is not broken, but it doesn't look that great. After applying the changes of the rounded corners and the dynamic color, you can see more appealing widgets that have consistent appearances with the device themes and colors. Let's look at another API improvement. Android 12 introduces a new API for achieving responsive layouts. As you can see in the screenshot, different layouts are switched as the widget is being resized. For example, let's look at the small layout. The minimum supported width and the height and the corresponding remote views are supplied as arguments. Regarding of the maximum supported width, it supports up to 269 dp, because 270 dp is specified as the minimum supported width for the next layout. Similarly, in terms of the height, the small layout supports from 110 dp to 279 dp. Then the system picks up the closest number of cells within size range. Sizing. Android 12 adds new attributes for providing better sizing options. Target cell widths and height attributes are introduced in Android 12, which specify the default grid cell sizes when the widget is placed in the home screen. Main widths and height attributes have been available before Android 12, which specify the default widget size in DP. It's recommended to specify both in terms of keeping backward compatibility. If your widget is resizable, you can now constrain your widget's maximum resizable range by using the max resize widths and height attributes that are introduced in Android 12 along with the main resize widths and the height attributes that constrain your widget's minimum resizable range. Android 12 also improved the widget picker experience. Two new attributes are introduced in Android 12. The first one is description, that as a description in the widget picker to understand the purpose of the widget. The second one is preview layout, that specifies an XML layout that is displayed in the widget picker. Before Android 12, preview image attribute has been available that specifies a static resource. But by using the preview layout attribute, you can see more accurate previews that adapt to device light or dark theme because the preview is constructed at runtime. And soon your favorite Google apps will benefit of the new Android 12 changes making your home screen feel like you, with more and more apps like yours adapting the new modern styles, we will be able to create a better widget ecosystem for our users. So I covered lots of improvements in Android 12, but there are even more new features you can follow. Please look at the description of the video. I'm going to add the resources to learn more about the changes in Android 12. I'm going to hand over to Marcel. He is talking about the beta tooling for Apple Widgets. Thanks, Takeshi, to show us some of the new additions in Android 12. Hi, everyone. My name is Marcel. I'm a developer relations engineer at Google, based in Singapore. And today, I'm going to talk a bit how we're improving tooling for App Widgets. We know that to build great widgets, we need great tooling. And while the widget API and remote views has been there since Cupcake, it was time for a more modern approach. Let's welcome Glant to the Jetpack family, a new API powered by Compose Runtime that will allow us to create app widgets following a syntax similar to the Compose that you are already familiar with. But not only widgets, we are exploring how Glant could be the base for other Glant Solids APIs by providing a common set of composables that together with the model-specific components allow us to abstract the complexity of the platform APIs. In the specific case of App Widget, what that means is that Glance takes the widget UI that you define using composables and translates them into actual remote views and then displays them on the widget, applying directly the new theming 
and some of the new features that Takeshi mentioned to you on Android 12, and whenever it's possible, make them backwards compatibility. In addition, Glance handles for you some of the lifecycle and common actions, doing most of the wiring for you, so you can just focus on building great widgets. Let's take a quick look on how building an app widget with Glance looks like. First, we still need to declare the app widget the same as we did before. In your Android manifest, you will link to your receiver. In this case, instead of being the app widget provider, it's going to be extending the Glance app widget receiver. Basically, this receiver will handle most of the things for you. You only have to provide what is your app widget. Then, this Glance app widget will force you to override the composable content function. Here is where you actually define your UI. Glance will take care of calling the method whenever it is necessary and display the widget UI for you. So, in a nutshell, no more XML with Glance. We can just use composables that you're already familiar with, like row, column, text, and so on. And underneath, the content defined here will be translated into the actual remote views and displayed for you on the app widget. It's important to understand, though, that Glance uses Compose Runtime and Compose-like syntax, but is an independent framework. The components, they look alike, but they are adapted for app widgets due to the remote view limitations. Since, as I mentioned before, the library translates them into remote views. So it's not possible for us to reuse the exact same composables that you uh, might use in Jetpack Compose UI. But if you're familiar with that, Glance will be really easy to understand. In addition, Glance makes handling user interaction easy because we are changing how to handle that using an action API. If you know how widgets work, they work on a different process making it hard and verbose sometimes to handle simple actions. Because it's not inside your process, you don't have ownership of those in that moment. So you always need to get called back from the other process that is handling the widget for you. Instead with Glance, you can just simply provide an action to any composable through the uh, clickable modifier. Then Glance will abstract the complexity in the wiring and just call back this action whenever the user clicks into that composable. In addition, we are providing predefined common actions. For example, to handle how to launch an activity. It's as simple as calling launch activity, passing the activity target class, in addition to some arguments if you want. Then Glance will simply call and launch the activity whenever the user clicks on that composable. Alternatively, we can provide custom actions, allowing us to execute some of the code. For example, we want to maybe update the location and refresh our widget whenever the user clicks on this button. What Glance is doing here underneath is making the wiring for you and handling this uh, clickable remote click through a broadcast receiver and calling your action that you define. Although whenever you execute this code, make sure that you have set any consuming task like network requests or database access to, for example, a worker using a work manager API. Another big pain point on app widgets was handling different sizes. App widgets are placed onto the user home screen where the space might be limited. In addition, it's a good practice to provide resizable widgets to allow users to resize and fit the widget the best into their um, home screen. But we know it's hard to handle some of this resizing and all these different responsive layouts. So Glance tries to make that a bit more simple using this size mode mechanism that provides us with three different options. Let's look at the first one. Size mode single is the default option. It basically specifies that the widget content we are defining here will not change regardless of the available size. What that means is that the content method then it's only called once with the minimum supported size that we defined on our widget metadata. If the available size changes for the widget, so the user is resizing the widget, the content will not be refreshed. If you actually want to change the content whenever the size changes, this is where you can use the size mode exact. This mode basically recreates our widget UI every time that the user resize our widget, calling the content function again, providing the maximum available size on that moment, allowing us, for example, to change our UI and add an extra button if there is enough space. 
while the previous mode allow us to completely like resize and, and change the content based on the billable size. For each resizing, our UI must be recreated every time. What that could cause is like some bumpy transitions whenever the user resizes and might be not the best performance. Especially for under 12, we can use the uh, responsive layouts and Glance make that easier by choosing the size mode responsive. It allows to define which sizes our widget can support using the DP size format. And for example, here we are mapping these sizes to specific shapes of our widget that we um, handle just for readability. Whenever the app widget is created or updated, Glance will call our content method, which each of the sizes provided before. So in this case, we'll be calling three times for the three sizes we defined. Each of these calls will be mapped to that specific size and stored in memory. So the content that we define there will, will be stored. Then allowing the system to select the best fitting one based on the billable size on the moment that the user resize the widget without having to recreate our full UI, providing a more smoother transition and better performance. And similar as before, depending on the size that we get here, we can change our UI, adding an extra text, or if it fits our horizontal rectangle size that we defined before, we can add an extra button. Or if it fits our big square, then let's add an extra footer text. To showcase the different size mode here and make the difference clear, we created this widget that outputs the value of the local size current whenever the content uh, function is called. In the first mode, you can see that regardless of the billable size that the, the widget has, it always shows 110 by 110. That's because the content function is only called once with the minimum supported size that we defined it on our widget metadata. In this case, 110 by 110. In the exact mode instead, you can see that the values are changing every single time that the user resizes that widget. That's because whenever the user resizes, the content function will be called passing the exact size value on that moment. Instead for the responsive mode, we define the two sizes here. One is 80 by 100 and the other is 150 by 120. So if you see, the content of the widget only changes whenever one of these sizes fits. It always tries to fit the best fitting one. So basically means the one, the biggest one that fits on the billable size or falls back to the closest one. What is important to note is that we are not recreating our UI. Our content has been called twice at the beginning and then the content is just changed depending on the billable size, making the transition more smooth and avoiding, you know, like recreating UI over and over. There is more to come, like support for widget state management, material use theming out of the box, but that's all we have to time to cover up today. We hope you are as excited as us to try the new API and build modern Android widgets. Thanks for watching this session. Have a great one.